Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome, and um, to all of our viewers today, we have John Mariani, the virtual gourmet, and my wonderful partner, John Coleman. Hey, hey guys. Art. Hi, John. Hiya. Good to see you again. Hey, um, I, uh, my daughter, and actually two of my daughters, with their families, got in a car uh, a couple of weeks ago. They, they took two cars. <laughs> got a fly in the room. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was, uh, my son just walked in un unknowing. Well, he tell him oh, to put his hello. pants on, will you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my daughter, uh, my two daughters with their families got in cars, tandem, drove from Southern California to Colorado, the mountains of Colorado, where they spent a week at a dude ranch. And they'd, they'd done that before. They knew where it was. And the traffic was uh, was light, and the, the people at the ranch, it wasn't at capacity. It was about 75 percent full but um and they had different rules you know they didn't have any indoor dining in the in the uh, bunkhouse or wherever it was they everything was uh, buffet but it's a summer dude ranch so what's the difference my point is that people are traveling they're just not going on the airplane and there's lots of, like going from southern california to colorado was a two-day trip it's a i don't know whatever 16 hours something like that um but there's lots of places we can go everywhere in the United States. The, the U.S. has, having been in all 50 states, thank you very much, the U.S. has a plethora of great destinations, va great vacation destinations. And, and a lot of them, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they're not just cities. I mean, there's a lot great, of plethora. Yeah. yeah they, just don't step in your plethora, that's all. It gets, gets messy. But anyway, I wanted to get your opinion about traveling here in the age of COVID-19. And uh... Well, I completely agree with you about America. My wife and I drove cross-country back in 1977. Uh, it was our honeymoon for 14 weeks across back and forth. Wow. And it was, it was just the best, you know. And we were young and didn't have much money, but I had assignments under my arm and so forth. And we'd find ourselves in... Uh, town we didn't even never heard of and uh, in the middle of uh, Alabama and so you want to spend another day here well, no let's move on to Little Rock Arkansas it was it was wonderful and it was there out of that came my first book the dictionary of American food and drink um, because we found out so much about what regional eating is from southern barbecue to Texas bar barbecue to southwestern barbecue to um, Indian restaurants and and, uh, and uh, the wonderful, wonderful, there are not many left, the wonderful cafeterias, Piccadilly and Furs and Morrison's, um, very few of them left, but they were terrific in those days. But yeah, um, that's about the only travel right now that I would consider is by car. Um, the planes, um, as you've heard, there have been incidents where the plane had to turn back because some belligerent moron would not put on a mask. Um, I don't completely trust that when you see the, the B-roll, John, of guys cleaning off the, the little air intakes and the seats and going like that, that that's going to do the job if that plane has to take off 20 minutes after it, it lands. Um, and uh, Greyhound buses are not quite my style, but um, the old idea of taking, well, even for me, I live in the suburb of New York City, uh, to take a train, Metro North train to Grand Central, um, I'm not going to get on it if it's as crowded as it is in rush hours and in months past. Yeah, I know who can blame you. I think everybody feels the same way. But I think of uh, my daughters, of course, took a two day trip to Colorado. But, you know, a one-day trip for an overnight stay to, if you're in Los Angeles, to San Diego or north to Santa Barbara, if you're in San Francisco, up to wine country, if you're, I'm just talking my area of the country. So um, if you're in the middle of the country, there's lots of great little little cities mm -hmm. and lots of tourist destinations. Um, I, I'm trying to think of even the Black Hills, which in college we made jokes about the Black Hills. There's lots of great tourist stuff in the Black Hills of uh, Dakotas. Um, and, of course, Minnesota, land of lakes. Land of know, lakes. 
uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, that whole area around Chicago, all the Chicagoans have uh, also south into Ohio. You know, there's really no place in the country where you don't have a fun destination available to you within a day's drive. I call a day's drive six hours. It's very, very fairy. By that I mean as much as I adore Italy, um, a day's drive in Italy will bring you to yet another beautiful little Italian town, which looks kind of like the one that you saw in Calabria yesterday. And so... Uh, and in France, oh, petit village, oh, so, so, très charmant, you know. Um, but in America, you step out the door, and because of our diversity, um, there's so many things to see. Um, a couple of caveats. Um, first of all, uh, if you're renting a car, I would check out how clean that car is and what their policy is about sanitizing. And I would bring jugs of sanitizer with me. I would also, in terms of whether you're staying in a hotel or a B&B, and I can't say which which is better clean. There's a lot lots of history of uh, cameras turned on the uh, chambermaids who don't do their jobs in in major hotels. But uh, I would consider bringing two items. Uh, One is a UVA wand. And the UVA one is what shows you, you see them again on B-roll, they put them on, oh, there's a blue light. Uh, Those are bodily fluids. That's not bacteria. Those are bodily fluids um, that they're finding. Uh, So you may want to bring that if you see that anywhere anywhere on the sofa or something. Um, The other thing is a UVC wand, which actually does kill bacteria. It's a light that zaps all the bacteria okay um but uh, those are those are the items that i would take uh with me you know apparently there's a big trend of people who are maybe going for a week or two or longer and are going by a mobile home or a uh whether they tow it behind them or the the big 39 foot uh self-contained which uh you need you you don't need anything beyond a regular license uh, for i think 39 feet is the is that limit uh, <laughs> uh, well, uh, it, it's like a it's, uh, like a bus, but the beauty of that is that once you have that, at least the interior area is contained, and if you can stop off at various campgrounds or places like that, then you can control your eating environment. Now, you may not be having uh, gourmet, or you could pick up local food and, and and cook it there as well. But it seems to me that if I were going to venture out and take a road trip. Before I would stay in hotels, I would probably want to do something like that. Well, and, if, that, yeah. if that's your want. I mean, a lot of people don't much like camping, and, uh, and a lot of people don't like uh, trailer parks and so forth. Uh, has a certain atmosphere, shall we say. So, um, But, yeah, if you're going to do it, uh, do it in the most highly sanitized way you can. Do you have any favorite places around the country uh, that you like? Well, there's all the obvious ones, uh, of course, um, which are uh, Chicago, Boston, Miami. Uh, I don't particularly like Vegas, but I mean, those are the obvious ones, San Francisco and so forth. Um, but I think there are a lot of second tier cities that people think, yeah, well, maybe I'll get there sometime. I take uh, Memphis, Tennessee and Nashville, Tennessee. Um, Memphis, well, both cities, even as recently as eight, nine years ago, were really down, but not out. But they had not capitalized on one thing that both of them have, which is an enormous, um, now is an enormous music scene. And um, Nashville, you talk about the Nashville sound, but if you were going there, I'm just bringing um, it up here. Um, If you were to bring up, uh, if you were to uh, go to Nashville 10 years ago, none of the big stars were appearing there. But now they do. And they have made a concerted effort in both Memphis on Beale Street and in Nashville to um, bring in uh, the best of new convention centers. A lot of this has been set back by um, virtue of, uh, of, of, the, of COVID. Um, so you can't go to a big concert, you can't go to a basketball game or anything. But there still are the little venues 
um, that you can go to the little restaurants like uh, you know Prince's famous hot chicken in, in Nashville, which invented the, the hot chicken, and there's still outdoor barbecue places all over the place. Um, I don't know about specific uh, museums um, because Memphis and Nashville have wonderful, wonderful music museums. Some are open, some are not because of social distancing. But um, these, are, these are the types of cities that um, I find uh, every bit as appealing, especially if you've already been to Chicago and Los Angeles several times uh, in your life. Um, so those are, those are just a New Orleans, of course, is, is what it is. Um, I don't know how they're coping these days uh, because the, the music venues would, would be closed. Uh, New Orleans is not rich in museums at all, except for the great, great World War II museum there, which, I mean, that's one of the finest museums in the world of its kind. So well done. Um, and of course there, although it's brutally hot, um, as it is in many cities, uh, around the country um, at this time of the year uh, and well into fall. Um, if you can stand the heat and the humidity, uh, you're going to eat great. So you're you're into a city as a destination because you know you'll have the services there, you'll have uh, culture and other things, as opposed to traveling across what they used to call the blue highways. Right. You hate the little blue highways and finding the world's largest ball of string. <laughs> oh, I love, I love that. As a matter of fact, when my wife and I did our cross-country trip, we stayed only on blue highways until we got to Texas, and then it gets impossible. Um, but that's all we drove on, little two-laners and so forth. And it, it, it was it was enchanting that we learned so much about the big ball of string and the, the Elvis Chapel and the world's smallest park, which is smaller than my desk. Um, which is in uh, Portland, Oregon. Um, there was a book at the time published by uh, Jane and Michael Stern called Amazing America. And it had all that stuff, the, the Cadillac stuck into the sand. Yeah, and yeah. The hotel shaped like a, 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 a teepee. Um, yes. It was, and um, I, I'm sure most of those things are still there. You'll yeah, always, a lot of them are, uh, yeah. You'll be pleased to know, John, uh, that uh, that ball of string, even though you haven't been there in a while, is six inch wider in uh, diameter uh, than it was when you visited it. I mean, it seems like not a whole lot, but that's you know, a lot more string. Uh, I have a, a question for you, if if I could. Uh, I'll put you on the spot because you are you just uh, an encyclopedic knowledge uh, of places. If let's say pick four quadrants, because you're not going to take a, a day trip to. Um, uh, Santa Monica to your favorite uh, 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 hole in the wall re restaurant that makes fabulous food there. But if you lived in, let's say, the uh, Northwest or the Southeast or Southwest, is there a particular place that somebody regionally might say, oh, well, I live in the Southwest, I can go there. So do you have like, uh, recommend that if you had an opportunity to go back to a place that you really enjoyed in each quadrant? Uh, uh, you could uh, recommend? Uh, I think that college towns and cities with big uh, universities are very good bets for all sorts of reasons. Uh, generally, they are a little wealthier, especially in the South. Okay, By wealthier, I mean economically more vibrant. Um, you do not want to go to visit New Haven, Connecticut, where Yale is, um, uh, which does not have that kind of charm at all. But in the South, um, University of North Carolina and Duke University, these are like visiting the great cathedrals of Europe, you know. And you'll also find, again, terrific Tennessee barbecue and, uh, um, and, and, and North Carolina, South Carolina, the, the crab shacks of the Gulf, the, um, uh, the, the seafood places. Um, that um, that I was referring to up in Maine, uh, the Atlantic, the blue crabs in Maryland. Um, the South is made for summer, not much made for winter, because um, there's that that much to do. But yeah, college towns, especially smaller ones like Lynchburg and places that have maybe old um, women's colleges, not old women in them, <laughs> <laughs> historic women's colleges or historic black co co colleges. Um, they're wonderful places to visit, and they usually do have museums, and they have a lot of 
terrific architecture and um, and they're good places to ask people where to go eat. Well, now it's obvious, John, that you're very East Coast and South uh, East oriented. So let me add in uh, for somebody in the West or the central part of the country. My favorite, one of my favorite towns is Santa Fe, New Mexico. Mm-hmm. A wonderful art center, lots of good food, great, interesting architecture, a lot of Indian stuff nearby. Um, it's a, it's a really great town, and there's a, it's a tour. They're ready for tourists at any time. Well, it's a, Another it's, one in a on, good on, in a good time in a, in the good days without the COVID. Um, yeah. I would say stay away from San Francisco, Santa Fe because it is so overrun with tourists. Oh, and, uh, interesting. The, the crummy pottery they're selling on the street. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's very, very uh, overrun. But I like Santa Fe when there's nobody there. When you go in the fall, you go in the winter, it's much, much nicer. Yeah. Or now when there's not many people there. Right. And my other favorite town on the north side northwest is bend oregon stay away from portland although portland's a great city Mm -hmm. go to bend it's a small town there's lots of little towns around it we went to through it yep we went to uh, bend a couple of years ago to visit my brother and ended up going to uh, a place called i think it's called sisters oregon probably an hour outside of bend and they are known for their annual quilting show. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure they're not having an outdoor quilting show this year, but um, it's still a cute little town with uh, it's that's just almost, it's yeah. very healthy. It's, it's as a matter of fact, it's one of the few towns in America where it's very difficult to tell the millionaires from the billionaires because they all wear paragon hoodies <laughs> all and Birkenstocks. You mean uh, Patagonia? What did I say? Paragon? Patagonia. Yeah. Yes, North Dakota, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and stocks. Those, those who who follow the billionaire, millionaire, billionaire, have their own language, and you know, Mariani has just show, shared He's some of that with us. He's a Paragon guy, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. Hey, John, thanks for your perspective on uh, traveling by car, seeing the USA in your. Now, do you know all the words to that? Dinosaur. Point where Doris, uh, well, she, she, she had a chorus of four guys behind her, I think, and uh, they took up the slack, and uh, she just went <laughs> what like that. Yeah, yeah. Good, and uh, we'll be looking for more travel advice in your virtual gourmet at uh, johnmariani.com. Thank you. You can sign up free for the uh, newsletter, order my books, and uh, my... Uh, New line of sweatshirts with hoodies and <laughs> <laughs> your paragon, paragon hoodies. Yeah, <laughs> and binge That's read great. and binge read your latest novel, uh, Love and Pizza. Thanks. Yes. Yeah, John. Thanks again. Great to see you. My pleasure. See ya. See ya. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.